By now, many players of World of Warcraft have experienced or heard of Blizzard's brand new event, Plunderstorm, a battle royale PvP mode that pits you against 60 different players at once, including yourself. If you've been out of the loop, let's explain what a battle royale is. A battle royale is a last man standing survival game that typically blends aspect of finding loot with exploration and PvP elements, though it's not unheard of for a battle royale to be completely PvE as well. In Blizzard's own version of this mode, players will experience a mix of both of these elements alongside a collection aspect that rewards them with cosmetic apparel. Originally, Plunderstorm was kept a complete secret from the players and wasn't playtested at all, and was rather kept internally by Blizzard. It wasn't until the actual patch day that Blizzard gave us the desired information, patch 10.2.6, and what was to come with it. A 60-man battle royale themed entirely around the Pirates of Warcraft. Blizzard has never actually shown an interest in battle royale games, and this event was completely designed around the idea to be accessible for all sorts of players. Whether they hate this mark or not is to be discussed later, but regardless, feedback was given by players of WoW to Blizzard themselves. To begin a Plunderstorm, you need to first log into Retail WoW with an active subscription, so owning the current expansion is not a requirement, and simply a $15 gateway to try out the mode. Once you're logged in, you'll see a bright icon of the Plunderstorm event next to the Dragonflight local at the top left, and selecting it will send you to a Tournament Realm-esque level. These realms are completely devoid of any add-ons, and it's just you and your character creation screen. You are allowed to pick between all the already available playable races in WoW, and are fit to customize them as you see fit, able to swap to and fro whatever you like. Once complete, you can click the ready button and join a game either completely alone or play with a single friend, pitting you against other duo teams. Once in a game, you're put into a custom-made lobby with mobs all around that help explain how the game works. You're also allowed to change your keybinds at will and set up your preferred style of play during the setup as the game prepares you and the others. Once 60 players have joined your lobby, you're launched off through a cannon, and after a short loading screen, you find yourself atop a parrot. You can guide the parrot to your desired landing spot throughout the map that takes place in the Arathi Highlands. Upon landing, you will find a various assortment of NPC creatures patrolling around with chests surrounding them. Killing these mobs will begin to earn you more experience, leveling up your character. These levels allow you to do more damage with all of your abilities and give you more HP at a maximum level of 10. Upon killing mobs, they all drop a currency called Plunder. That rewards you both experience to your run and reputation for the Captain Keg Lex crew redown track. Alongside the experience you gain, you'll start to notice brand new abilities from chests and mobs you're killing. You get two offensive abilities like Slicing Winds and Fire Whirl, two utility abilities such as Hunter's Chains and Repel, and finally a singular item slot for things like Barrel Roll. These items can all be upgraded further to either increase their damage or reduce their cooldowns, allowing for some pretty crazy combos to be found. All the while, a storm on the edge of the map is steadily closing in on the area, pushing people closer to the center. Standing in the storm will damage you and inevitably kill you if you stand it for too long, so eventually you will run into other players because of the reducing space to avoid them. But this is all just the basics. Once you land and begin to grab some of your first abilities, you may find that it's pretty random what you get. There's no 100% guarantee you'll get a star bomb if that's what you want off the first elite mob or chest. The game mode is forcing you to work with what you're given and make a build that works for you on the fly and adapt quickly. It's very fast paced, especially when you begin to run into other players who are in the same boat as you. Truthfully, others might just get luckier than you and roll a better power, but this is actually a big nature of battle royale games. No game is going to be perfectly balanced. So there's bound to be those abilities in a battle royale that are just clear and an advantage over others. Blizzard thankfully is keeping a hot eye on the balance of this game mode and is making quick hotfixes to allow the game to feel more fair. Regardless of balance though, if you become skilled enough at Plunderstorm, anyone can make any build truly work with what they're given. As of now, the average PvP -er loves the game mode as it's finally a piece of content that feels completely dedicated to them and not just a new season attached with a new meta of classes for Arena. Even players who don't PvP a whole lot enjoy the game mode as farming the NPCs gives a decent number of plunder for the cosmetics that they're likely after. However, a good chunk of players are PvE players, people who spend 90% of their time in their current raid tier or mythic plus dungeon. Because of this, their reception, while possibly a minority in the feedback, is certainly a very loud minority. They absolutely despise the mode, but want the cosmetics attached to it so they view Plunderstorm more as a large error that they have to slog through and then never touch again. I believe there may be a couple of ways to fix this issue and I'll get to it a bit later. A partial point to make is that some players may just be experiencing a genuine skill issue. It's a new game mode and because they don't completely understand it yet, they can get frustrated that they aren't winning and players who have to put in more time than them are considered tryhards or incredibly rude. There's even been reports of players just trying to get their daily quests done before getting killed and are unable to as the daily quest rewards are an extra amount of plunder for completion. It's hard to convince PvE players to join a PvP environment, when it's literally a completely different style of game than Raiden and WoW. The thing is about Battle Royale games, however, 
there's a lot of players and everyone wants first place. Your odds of winning are just as good as anyone else there, and it's much more likely you're going to lose rather than get first place. If you start to get in the mindset that winning is just getting to the top 10 or even higher, then you'll start to enjoy the mode even more. Besides, even if you lose, you're able to queue again almost instantly and get back into another game. Almost like nothing ever happened. But still, not everyone enjoys PvP. So, how can it be fixed? Personally, the fun part of the mode is the PvP itself, not the farming the mobs. It's a very fast-paced, team-based fighting that rewards skill shots and memorization of enemy cooldowns. When playing with a partner, you can pull off some of the craziest combos to almost one-shot a person and remove them from a fair fight. But these combos can be very difficult to pull off and also risk less mobility and defensiveness in exchange for higher damage. One slip up and you might be in the main menu again. My personal suggestion for Blizzard is they allow a mode of Plunderstorm that is exclusively PvE-based without a fear of an enemy player harming them. In order to make this work, the plunder gain would need to be lower than PvP, as PvP still needs an incentive to be done, and if you're able to gain plunder at an accelerated rate compared to the PvE version of the game, players should continue to play it. In the PvE version, the mobs players fight can increase in levels the players themselves do, and possibly give every mob additional mechanics so it feels more challenging, rather than just dodging a frontal and kiting a pack around. You can also add more mobs to the actual map, including more bosses like Pieces of Hate and World Quest type objectives. It removes the strained PvE players experience when they don't want to be constantly stressed out by a player ganking them. Some people also just cannot play at certain levels as others, and it allows these less able to play at a chance at maxing out the reputation of the event. If you weren't to consider the extra mobs, however, you could fill the empty slots of the arena with a bot NPC that poses enemy players, similar to Comp Stomp. They would obviously play a lot much more dumbed down versions than a player, and would likely lack the critical thinking skills of an average player at the moment. But as mentioned, to increase the want for PvP, Blizzard could allow the rate of plunder obtained to stay higher than PvE content, or even attach special feats of strength achievement rewards to titles to truly make it more unique than its counterpart. With the inclusion of a mode like this, it allows for players of every skill level to approach the content at their own pace, and possibly even jump into PvP for the increased gain once they believe they understand enough about the game mode. It removes a gateway where many players may have heard Plunderstorm was PvP and hadn't even bothered to try it out, as PvP is nowhere near their interest. It should also go without saying that removal of all add-ons in this mode is an absolute plus, and should remain as such. It makes every player at the same level, and there's no external weak aura or add-on telling the enemy when you used a button, and the exact timer on it following. However, to further allow comfort in all players, Blizzard should allow a similar edit mode for the UI of Plunderstorm as they do in retail. It can be customized at will and to the comfort of each individual to suit their needs in a way they enjoy, but the default UI isn't bad either. It's just something to further improve quality of life. I also think Blizzard should aid a sort of training range lobby that places you into a tutorial slash setup version of Plunderstorm that allows you to configure all your keybinds, UI, and even learn the ropes at your own pace rather than the usual six or so seconds of setup before being launched into an arena. You can already do all this aside from the UI, but with rather limited time. So letting players discover what they prefer in a stress-free environment seems like an absolute plus. Also keep the NPC to cash in the sort of training lobby so people can continue to pick and choose which cosmetics they want to be displayed in their character as they progress through the Renown track. So we've talked about methods to potentially fix the player differential. But how can we preserve the game mode to stay for the longevity of WoW? It's clear to anyone that is participating in the event that Blizzard is exclusively highlighting that it will be a limited time thing, and they want you to play it as much and as soon as possible before it's gone forever. I believe this to be a big mistake, and will absolutely upset a large majority of players, myself included. It'd be a shame to see such a unique method to play WoW to be left to the dust like the other scenarios of WoW, like the Mage Tower before it was eventually redone in Shadowlands due to popular demand. So, this video is a letter to Blizzard telling them to keep this mode in WoW. However, issues like queue times and skill ceilings may reach too high once eventually everybody reaches the final renown track. So, the only players you'd find in Arena are people seeking to truly test their skills, or none at all. I'd suggest a method similar to the Brawler skill to be introduced in the Plunderstorm that has seasons attached to it. You can return every so often when Blizzard is ready with brand new twists and themes attached, perhaps once or twice at expansion. The current model they have works greatly, but with the additions of the potential PvE version and training range, the event may just survive beyond a single patch. It may be ironic to make the comparison of the Brawler's Guild to this event, as Blizzard hasn't reiterated upon the Brawler's Guild in quite some time. So this is also an attempt to get the ball rolling in that area as well. Somewhat. These two activities are perfect pieces of content for players to tackle during content rounds of drawn-out seasonal content, and allows Blizzard to take more time refining the upcoming seasons of an expansion. 
Though, if Plunderstorm is going to leave for a potential entire expansion, Blizzard needs to find a way to return it to players in a sense where it feels brand new. While the name Plunderstorm could continue, no one is really going to want to farm out the event for long if it returns in the exact same way it was originally implemented, meaning the same spells and same theme of pirates. This is a suggestion to instead bring back Plunderstorm when able with a completely different set of change and new abilities alike. You can also remove the theme of pirates entirely and bring in different aesthetics from WoW's already existing culture. Instead of pirates, maybe it's themed around old gods and rewards are as such. You could even go with the theme of Alliance vs. Horde, the Scourge, Kul Taras, Zandalar, and more. The possibilities of the WoW's world are endless. You can think of it in a similar fashion how Hearthstone delivers their model. Every so often, a new expansion drops with themes relating to WoW and they usually take the aesthetic and drive it up to 11. Because why not? There's no reason to take it super seriously, as nothing in Hearthstone is truly canon events anyways from WoW's lore, and it really helps keep the love of WoW's goofiness alive. Plunderstorm is the perfect opportunity to deliver something similar with equally silly creations and fun. You already earned 500 Traders Tender from the training post whenever you reach Renown 33 for the Plunderstorm reputation, and this can be further leaned into future reiterations. There's no real marked downside in allowing such, and serves to further incentivize players to participate in the event. Combining all that's been talked about, it helps turn a possible one-time event into something that can be preserved for the longevity of WoW. You could possibly even tie a rating to the event, adding rewards for being the rank 1 player at the end of the Plunderstorm season, giving PvP players something that's just for them for once like they've been asking for literal years. The biggest issue aside from making it accessible for strictly PvE players is also the time gating of the cosmetics. It seems super counterintuitive to remove the high effort cosmetic Blizzard's made and completely lock them behind FOMO. It should be considered by Blizzard methods to re-obtain these cosmetics in while simultaneously earning the current versions of the new set, if they consider the ideas of this video is provided. Similar to the Mage Tower Artifact of Legion, players have begged Blizzard to reintroduce them in some capacity that they can obtain them once again, and they've shown zero plans to make this a possibility. It'd be a shame to make a mistake like this again and sour the taste of the players over this great game mode, just because they won't allow you to farm that missing pirate set or parrot mount. Prestige does not come from playing it when it was current, but rather overcoming the grind presented by Blizzard. So even if you allow players time to hold on to their special sets and mounts, they should return so newer players, or those who weren't active at the time, are able to reap the rewards and be part of the crew. It would make sense they have to play Plunderstorm in order to get them, of course. Maybe with an additional grind, or once there's enough themes provided, the player can just pick and choose which reputation they want to farm out completely, while simultaneously playing in the current rendition of Plunderstorm. These are my general thoughts on the event, and I'd love to hear even more from the players. I believe this game mode will greatly benefit WoW's longevity, and should be viewed as a very secondary task to the main game. Not insanely grindy or difficult, unless you want it to be, but still good fun for you and others. Even certain Blizzard developers have commented that during the playtests, they tried out Dressfar from Kul Taras as a playable arena for players, meaning they may have more ideas backlogged for now and are simply waiting for the feedback of players. To think they almost settled on Dressfar also implies the theme of pirates may have never come to be. Instead, you could have been out there slaying witches to get riches. Overall, Blizzard should heavily consider keeping this game mode. At the very least, making it a PvP brawl that's in rotation, so players can continue to enjoy its fun and not see it abandoned for many years at a time.